Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. So, we'll be getting started here shortly. How are you doing, Van Voken? We've got chickens, we've got Ron. How are you guys doing? Now, uh, the background image is the, uh, it's the initial sketch of the art that I'm having done at the moment. I was going to use the normal one, but I couldn't find it in time, so <laughs> that's why that's there. That's not going to be normal. So, let me go ahead. Now, this, um, I also added a couple mods in that uh, since we last played. It's been a little while, actually. So, yeah, it'll look a little bit different. We are doing it on the larger monitor now, and I tested it, and it, it seems to work. I haven't tested it in an actual live turn, but it should work fine enough. Hmm, I dearly hope he's not setting me the uh, wrong turn, so that's what I named it. I'm hoping. Otherwise, it's going to be a short stream. Oh, okay. Looks like we're in luck. <clears throat> I'm not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, happy New Year to you as well. Ah. Good evening there as well. I can't... I can't pronounce that name. I think that looks like a La... La Luigi? La Luigi? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, modern Japan still. Yeah, I was looking for that mod. I can't, I can't remember which mod I used. I cannot remember. Okay. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> I'm not used to that, but that's actually quite handy just to see where it is. I think it did that before, but I don't think I remember it's prominent. So that's the image from one of the uh, east, isn't it? Yeah, so, not expecting all that much here today. I'd, I'd rather there be little action in a sense. Uh, we do have a large shipment of fuel coming down to Tulagi. Uh, I know, right? Because uh, I've got a number of different mods and um, I've changed things around, haven't I? I really need to make a save where I have the initial ones. Yeah, probably art mods. I added a bunch in there. Oh god, I have to really look quite far now to look at the actual engagement. So we have... Ah, oh, okay, so that's the USN submarine there. God damn, I have to look quite far now. Ooh, that's cool. I haven't seen that before. That looks quite sexy. I like that. That's pretty pretty. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's cool. As you can tell, I have done a lot of testing. Ooh, we have a submarine icon there. That's cool. So, I believe it was the last turn he attempted to go with a full speed bombardment of it. looked like it was going to be um, Kira Kira. Now, he was intercepted by a number of our submarines, so I think that prevented the bombardment going ahead there. Oh, I do have uh, two submarines heading into F8, or F8, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, hopefully, we can try and get in there. Everything is so small. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe there's other art mods where it's like larger. But, I mean, this is it, really. Hmm. I think maybe we haven't been night. Maybe the day should be easy to read. I could maybe, um... I don't know how you'd mod it, but maybe if you could change, like, the colour of the text, perhaps. Alright, so we see I-158 over here. Ah, so I was hoping that there wouldn't be destroyer escorts. But, yeah, okay. That's not ideal. When I looked during the actual turn, there was no escort spotted, but that could be really quite bad. But, uh, they can generally tank quite a lot. 13 hits, but it didn't look like it was terrifically bad, but we'll see. Oh, the Dane who moved, uh... Ah. That's been a while. That's an old reference there. How's it over in Thailand, actually? Okay, so moving into the air operations. Yeah, I'm quite glad that we didn't have any um, shenanigans this turn, per se. There's still time for shenanigans, of course. But I'm quite eager to get fuel unloaded at Tulagi. I, swore, I can't remember how much it is now. It, is it, it might be 80k fuel, or it might be more than that. 
believe, away. Or it might be around about 8k. I think it's something about sort of nature. But I need to get that unloaded. I do have two patrol boats actually heading to Pongi, I believe it is. Uh, they're going to be picking up some of the naval guard that are there. They're just the basic support units. I need to move them to Ellinglam. Uh, we did reduce the actual altitude that we're bombing at, so I'm fairly sure that is what we did. <coughs> Excuse me. My apartment's a little bit dusty, so I need to clean up. I'm playing with bloody uh, air filters or something like that. God knows where I'm just going to be from. I do like that. <laughs> That's quite cool, actually. That's quite nice. It definitely makes it a little bit nicer to read. It's not as bright, which is quite handy. So, yeah, 258 there. Uh, we came in... Yeah, about 3,000 there, so that's looking good then. <clears throat> Excuse me. The icons are handy, at least we can see a little bit more easily. I can see the red lights from where they're coming from. I do have a number of uh, light bombers over here on the high land, but I need to move north. Uh, they'll be able to move north this turn, though. Ah, uh, before the global thingy, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm hoping that he, he did have a force cross over here to Kyanko. I'm hoping that the force is over here, because there's some here. Uh, they should arrive in Kyanko shortly enough, I would hope. Uh, thank you very much there. I like, I like the little uh, Shiva. I don't know how much that is, but thank you. Hmm. Hey, doing that? Oh, good to have you, my man. Matrix is considering making the last beta of AE official, possibly included other stuff. I like. Did they, uh. When did they say that? In fairness, I don't really frequent the forums all that often. If you're on the uh, Discord link, could you post a link to that? That'd be interesting. I don't really know what that's going to make a difference of if everybody's using the beta, but who knows? Maybe they're actually going to pay attention. I can remember emailing them a number of years ago about Warren Pacific, and they said, yeah, they have they have plans for it. That was a while ago. I never heard anything since then, but there's always been rumours. Also rumours about vampirism, but I don't know. I don't know which one's more likely. Maybe both. That's interesting. Six allied ships there, pal. That is a friend, okay. So we had a submarine take, a fair bit of damage. I was allowed to check about that. It didn't seem to be tremendously bad to say it's a destroyer escort as well in a shallow water hex, that's not ideal. Uh, a little annoying though, because we didn't see any destroyers or escorts. Uh, actually, um, I don't think we've had confirmation of where we of the carriers. They were um, a, a little bit north, north uh, east-ish. Of Luganville, last turn days. That's cool. Oh, I like that. That's pretty nice. That's pretty interesting. Now uh, they're working on a small remaster. My gosh, easy to install, compatible with modern systems. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Well, that's very interesting then. Hmm. I'd be interested if they pay any official attention to it. Who knows? We might get uh, yeah, like as Vogue says, there's some bug fixes in there. That'd be quite cool. And who knows, maybe um, maybe they may make it easier for people to change things, or I don't know, who knows. I guess it's still the same game, but that's pretty cool. That's pretty good to know, then. As you can see, they tell me shit. <laughs> they tell me absolutely nothing.
Again, this is a part that will take the longest every single turn, but it will be absolutely... It's going to be really satisfying when we do take Chunchi. That's eventually going to happen. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I saw something about a 42 one. I'm not familiar with that. I, I did see that. I was looking at the forum last night, actually. I did see something about a 42 start. Uh, so what would that have been, essentially? Is that... Uh, well, obviously, it's a little bit later into the war there. Uh, what was the issue, then, essentially? I think, essentially, it does a lot of the um, scripting, doesn't it, for the AI, in a century. I don't know anything else beyond that, so I've really looked into them. There was a time when we used to be able to see the actual cores, but now we just see a, a whole hell of a lot of war areas and group armies. The good news is these are all going to be worth victory points to us. And the intriguing thing is we see uh, cores such as the 16th Chinese Corps, the 9th Chinese Corps. And so there are cores in there that really are shattered, which is interesting. Oh, well, that, that is true, isn't it? Yes. I can imagine, no. That makes absolute sense, though. Mm, no, I can fully imagine that. I like the cat there. That's pretty cute. Okay, there we are. So, two guns lost there. Two vehicles. Well, one destroyed, one disabled there. So, numbers um, obviously do range. The amount of guns, though, hasn't changed. And the amount of iron-on guns is slowly increasing. I mean, we're cur uh, currently we're using just the independent um, artillery units. Uh, so, we've seen there 228 casualties, 7 destroyed, 19. Not the best we've had, but still we had more with the actual air, I'd, I'd imagine. But it's getting there. Mobardin over here. It is a little bit painful, but I do want to try and use some of his supply if I can. That one inconclusive. Okay. Another nice, quiet turn. I know it seems very boring. Ooh, and then he actually gets to a size 3, which is actually... That was actually a little unexpected. I, I never thought we'd get to that point now with how the situation had gone. But, uh, yeah, it's continued. Um... I mean, free is good, don't get me wrong. Might be that we want to look towards fortifications now, perhaps. So, Milne Bay there, size 2, Tagula, size 2. A good turn for us in that area, then. Having size 2 airfields allows us to actually um, throw out offensive missions there. So, I'm pretty happy about that. I mean, we can definitely see, though. He's aggressive. Well, he's very aggressive when he wants to be. We saw the attempted bombardment. We were fortunate that we managed to... I mean, it's a shame, because if we had had the actual naval assets in place, or had not buggered up the actual range settings, we might be able to strike it, but, but you know, how things go, right? But again, I'm not going to be um, this in a turn of action anytime soon. I do like these new options, by the way. They do kind of look nice. So we're going to go ahead and just reopen this, and as is the custom. So we're on June 7th now. Sure, the Jones will be happy in about what two, two more years. Okay, so we'll just reopen this up. But no. that's a very dark screen, isn't it? <laughs> it's very moody. Ah, so a War the Pacific Admirals Edition remaster. That's going to be interesting. What are they going to call it then? Is it still going to be called the same thing? Surely they have a great opportunity to like... Ah, 
rename it. They could call it the Rear Admiral Edition or I don't know. They need to call it something cool. Right, so take a look at the actual turn here then. Now we're not, we're not seeing all that much. Uh, that was a sub that was hit, yeah. So not terribly hard. Looks like it was the I-158. I mean, she's listed as crippled, which, yeah, don't get me wrong, she absolutely is. Uh, but she's not too bad. Seven speed's pretty good. Flotation damage isn't too bad at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, depth charges. I did have another one in there. Now, I'm going to have uh, her return it. Yeah, have her return instead. She does have about 30 mod durability, but again, these are the float plane subs. Right, I do need to go ahead and actually pick up a float plane. Should be able to do that a longer there. That got shot down by the cap in the area. So, destroy mine to be better, destroy mine layer, apparently. Canton Island was seen an asset out there. Uh, that would be worth investigating. It could be potentially something useful. I know Evoca, but come on. You've got to embrace the marketing. But I guess it'd probably be uh, counterproductive. People would be like, oh, what's this new version? Oh, what's this new game? But alas, we can dream. Okay. Hmm. So things are quite stable here at the moment in time, which I'm quite happy with. Uh, yeah, so the 3rd Division heading north there. Ah, there we go. So at long last, we do have our units in place now. So we do have this element of Chinese uh, collaborationist forces over here, which is good. We've got the armoured cars, and they're going to be replaced by the 3rd Division regiments as they uh, arrive in the area. Then I can have the armoured car just go do armoured car things, essentially. So I'll cover that. We have this under control. Uh, we have forces obviously marching towards my boy. Um, right, so did they drop off those tanks so quick? Surely not. Oh, that must be, yes, so that was the ships that had unloaded the naval guard. So we do have the 8th tank regiment unloading over here. That's good news. They haven't unloaded as of yet, but that's fine. These guys are marching. They only made 15 there. Uh, it is secondary road, though, so it will take a little while. Um... Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> it takes a little while longer for the road to load. You can see quite a little bit more there. Okay. Hmm. I was thinking something I could potentially do is have the game... Sorry, have the stream export this in 1920 by 1080. But I feel with a 1440 should work. I'm not too sure. I guess we'll figure that one out as we go. Not used to have a screen this large. Nor a second screen, so we'll have to figure things out. But yeah, we have our forces on the way over here to Pai Pai. Uh, once we get that, we can take that. And then those forces can head over here to Chongqing. Uh, we do have... Yeah, they're moving south. Third tank regiment on the way over here, then. Yeah. And again, the good thing is... Each and every day is another day of prep. And I do like that prep. Okay, so second tank regiment has moved across over here now. That's cool. Have them... Um, uh, in combat mode for the moment. In fact, no, it will be worthwhile having that head towards uh, Kienko. It would make it easy in case these forces retreat in any direction. I do want these hex sides over here, so I don't need to worry about that. Effectively, Chong, uh, Chongqing is actually contained now. We do have control of the hexes at either... Well, we have control of these hex sides, or we have control of the actual hexes here. So in theory, nothing can get in or out of Chongqing now. Which is good. They shouldn't be able to retreat down that way. They may try to retreat towards Ankang, though. So that would be a huge pain in the ass. Uh, so it wouldn't be um, against my best interest then to have as large of a force over here to attack. Try and just force them to surrender. 15th Tank Regiment moved in here as well. Uh, the good news is when they do move in here, they are able to upgrade, it seems. That's a very small tank regiment, isn't it? There's not many vehicles to that regiment. Though they are type 1 medium, so they're actually better than the type 89A that we had beforehand. Which is quite good. Okay. They're moving on along. It is a pain in the ass that you have to... Like, you march them up here, but because there's enemy forces, they have to then be told to march again. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a look at the actual losses here today, then... Uh... 
two Jakes, two Ops, a Sally and a Sally, B5. So, family in our, <laughs> in our cop this day. Ship sunk. Now, so let's send the swordfish over here, uh, swordfish over here, which is actually quite interesting. Now, I didn't hear any sound effects for the uh, submarine going down, but it does show, then, that we are inflicting some pretty decent damage. At least I've got to imagine we're doing some damage to them. Yeah, so there are the DDs over here. Yeah, so the main uh, uh, show here, then, have they been and gone? Ah, uh, there we go. So it looks like we had a certain... Ah, uh, there we go. So it's on retirement allowed. That's kind of annoying. Unless Gary's changed something and not told me. <laughs> That's entirely possible. I'm going to assume that we want that fuel down there. But I'm going to have to ask Gary about that. I'm assuming Gary wouldn't have done that. Yeah, it's one of those, isn't it? It seems that they didn't unload. Okay, we can get them moved in there then. A uh, little annoying that we have to delay, but that's fine. I do have that half full that needs to be unloaded. So we'll sort that out momentarily. Still unloading a additional supply over here as well. Oh yes, they brought in the additional uh, aviation support, didn't they? Having the additional supply definitely helps too. Very handy to have there. So I'll take a look at the actual troops. Yeah, so we do have additional aviation battalions here now. It looks like some are still being unloaded, but that's just a supply here at this moment in time. And we have the arrival of uh, four new submarines out here too, which is very handy. That one has some pretty bloody good range. J1 class. Shame it can't carry any midgets, but yes. That's got some great endurance there. I-10. Yeah, I was hoping I could have uh, refueled them this turn, but it looks like they'll have to be refueled next turn then. I did move the Chogai, Haguro, and Nachi over here. Alongside Jinsu, Arare, Yudachi, Samidara, Wakabe, uh, sorry, Wakaba, uh, over here to Tamagi, just act of security, really. Do we have any detection over our ships here? They're undetected. Uh, what I need to go ahead and do then, I did change out the commanders over here. Like, Musu is uh, commanded by Asakura Bunji. So you can see that we do have the Night One Naval there. What I would like to go ahead and do is uh, take a look through the actual existing ships and task forces and just really try and collect the best captains that we can and task force commanders that we can. That seems to be quite the large piece, really, that we're missing in this area. Having high naval should allow us to actually try and hit something, which would be handy. So right now we're not seeing all that much there. I don't imagine he's left the area, we may just simply have poor intelligence. I go F7 to see weather. So it looks like we have clouds in the area. Not so much around the New Hebrides, but uh, to the north around the Santa Cruz we do have bad, or at least poorer weather. That's okay. Take a look over there then. So 25 fighters, 9 auxiliaries, 15. So numbers look to be um, pretty consistent. <laughs> I like that dog. That's a cute dog. Numbers over here. That's annoying, really. I guess in hindsight we should have moved maybe more aggressively, but I suppose it's the issue that we are fighting without the carrier support. Had we had the carrier support, we might have been able to be more aggressive, but um, that's fine. We're not too far out now from actually having the... Uh, Shokaku and Zuikaku upgraded. If I go over here. Yeah, 15 days. That should go by pretty quickly. It's going to be quite... It is, it's really going to make a difference to actually have some radar. <laughs> it's actually going to be really quite nice. It doesn't have the... Actually, no. No, no. I, I think the uh, Prince of Wales has uh, 200,000 yards range. So we don't have the range of the Prince of Wales radar. I think we have about average radar range then compared to like the USN. Uh, but I guess that does have, uh, I imagine that varies a lot really from ship to ship. Probably the more modern ones will have superior radar, or obviously once they've had their upgrades will have superior radar. Accuracy is going to be an interesting one, but just in, in, just in all honesty, having that radar makes a huge difference for us. Should make the carrier task force in, in and of itself more survivable really, so I'm quite happy. It does cost us, but it it doesn't cost us fuel while they are there, so that's not too bad. We do have... Uh, this force will be moving down south in the near future. So we have Yunya and we have Yamato. 
as well as the seaplane cruisers and that sort of thing there. And they're eventually going to be heading down south. And it's going to be quite handy to have Yamato down there. At least with her being able to actually take on fuel directly from the uh, Dutch East Indies, that's going to be quite, quite handy. So we did have our troops unload over here then. There's a tanker being loaded up over there. Yeah, so they unloaded. They're going to return um, shortly enough. But I do have these regiments over here now. So I need to figure out what we want to do with them. I am a little bit conscious that um, there are outlying positions over here that could could have allied troops landed them and that could cause problems. But it's also we need to have like pretty hefty air power in this area just to make sure we can keep it under control really. Got to try and prevent the landings, that's a thing really, isn't it? Okay, so we'll take a look then at our operations report. I want 69 in the ARD there, good. Yeah, reporting hits there is a good thing. Uh, we'll go ahead and check on that squadron shot enough. They'll probably have gained experience there. Ah, crashes on London, that's a <laughs> surprising. Gosh. Yeah, so you'll hit there. And these are the two 250s, I believe, as well. So they, uh, two 250 kg, so they should be quite nice. They should hurt. Okay, I was about normal. He may actually have B-17s there, but I don't think they would have that range. That's near Roynumar. And then a, yeah, that's quite good. Uh, Karachi, uh, Karachi, um, I think that's India side, isn't it, somewhere? Oh, no, it might be, I think it's down this way somewhere. Right, okay, so Musu takes a jank replacement there. Oh, <coughs> excuse me, hates his K5. Okay, <laughs> I'll have to take a look at that. Right, so do have a 12 tank regiment there. Yeah, Kianko, Kianko seems to be a place where we can upgrade that. That's quite good. So 12th uh, regiment and 15th regiment upgrade there. 10th uh, slash B has upgraded. 2nd uh, slash C has upgraded to Ligon. That's quite handy then. And a new AP arrives there. Yep, so it will be interesting. Once we actually do get our armored forces, it's just, just essentially everything collected over at uh, Chongqing. I think we should do relatively well. The fact that we do have superior tanks to what we did have beforehand. Not not completely, but they should... Uh, well, we definitely have more Type 1s than we did beforehand versus Type 8 to 9A. That should help us out. Uh, pretty considerably as well. Uh, a little bit more armor, a little bit more firepower should make a difference, one would hope. Yeah, I, I'm waiting for them to cross over here so I can destroy them. They'll eventually come back over here to Chongqing, but at least I can actually uh, leave Kyanko with just this tiny AA garrison move forces out elsewhere then. Still waited on the rest of the armor, artillery, and troops arrive. These guys will head out this way. Uh, we do have another two divisions heading here too, as well as that uh, headquarters. Yeah, so it's going to be a little while, but once they are actually assembled over here, then that's going to be quite good. And the good thing is as well, once we do have the, um, pretty much the bulk of the Imperial Japanese assembled there at Chongqing, it is going to make it easier then to decide what we want to do when we'll have things centralized in, in, in any regards there. So we we'll have um, unrestricted, I think we'll go out into the Pacific. The other forces will have to decide what to do with. Um, I'd like to get another division perhaps into Burma at least, uh, maybe two more. Like at the moment we have two Japanese divisions there. Some Thai forces as well, not all of the Thai forces did leave, but some Thai forces here. But it would be nice to have another division or two. Having two divisions that were concentrated perhaps would be quite nice. At the moment we do have the 33rd and I think it's the 18th uh, spread around a little bit. Yeah, 33rd and 18th are spread around a little bit. I'm focusing on holding on to the, yeah, onto these bases with the rail guards. Well, rail connections. The reason being that um, if we can maintain control over here, we should be able to rather quickly redeploy. At least that's the idea. How that works out in reality is going to be quite different. Uh, we are fortifying these positions as well. Any level of fortification will make a difference in that train. A uh, pretty considerable difference as well. 
I mean, that's like jungle, jungle roof over there in the north, yeah. And the clay terrain over here is a uh, special one. Definitely going to need to fortify that. Hmm. And if we did have four divisions, perhaps, I could potentially bring Chinese collaborationist forces into Burma to uh, garrison, perhaps. Or just in general, we'll be able to garrison China with the Thai forces and the Chinese collaborationist forces. And then we should have potentially Japanese forces to maybe put some pressure on over here. I don't think I'd want to really invade India per se, but I think I would like to try and secure like jungle rough positions and just, just try and give us a, a good buffer. Uh, but the issue is there's only so much supply that can make it across here, which is a difficulty. But yeah, it's something that we can do perhaps. Okay. And we'll check on our R&D then. Oh, actually, we'll check on uh, signal intelligence. So, Pearl, Sydney, Colombo, Dutch Harbour, Pago Pago, or Pago Pago, and San Francisco. The uh, usual. So, Dutch Harbour then obviously being here. That's what I'd like to check out. I do have two subs patrol nearby. Hmm. I do have to be careful with that range. I don't believe he can use wildcats uh, out of that range. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just get the Kiko Maru and the uh, Tatibana Maru to go ahead and just pick up the elements of the 84th Naval Guard there. But yeah, that says a lot better <laughs> spotted. That's not surprising considering the distance isn't that far. It's like half, half their range of the BBYs. Now... Ah, uh, there we are. I was going to say, I thought they would have arrived by now, but I guess uh, not that many turns have actually passed, really. So we do have the battleship Fuso. She's heading down there. Uh, that'd be nice. I do want to collect the actual battleships um, essentially together. It, kind of. Just, uh, just the idea being really well. If we have them actually concentrated, then that is going to be quite a formidable force to play with. We are in an interesting position right now, because obviously we did have the engagement in the death of Haruna. I really don't know the damage that she might have actually put out against the other ships in that area. It's it's pretty hard to say there. Uh, we landed shells. I, I can't really say which shells we landed. We could go back and watch the replay, but obviously I sped through that. But I'm hoping that we put at least some uh, ships into shipyard for s at least some length of time. It wasn't worth a death there, but obviously that was a bit of a situation gone too far. But I'm hoping that Prince of Wales isn't going to be molesting us in the near future. I'd like to try and concentrate the battleships and have an answer against her. I mean, obviously it'd be ideal to use, like, aircraft against her, really, but uh, she's a hard target. She's not going to go down easy. And frankly, her still being alive is a pretty problematic thing, really. She does have that speed. She's pretty fucking nasty. That radar on that AA as well. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Yeah. I just swear to god I have like there's only there's like two definites in my campaigns. One, Haruna dies, and two, the Prince of Wales survives. She gets torpedo, but she'll survive. Next campaign that needs to change. <laughs> it absolutely needs to change. Okay. So we've seen some issues regarding supply over here. I can move that across there. I mean we're doing a lot of building work, which is why. But we can move that across. We do have... Well, this is a bit of a supply issue. Well, there's a 17k over here because this is where the main base is going to be. But I do want to move a little bit more supply down here. In general, Dutch East Indies does need more supply. Uh, which is going to be underway. Ah, I'm going to pick up these assets over here. Need to have a garrison over here at uh, Kagayan. Okay. So we do have 48 slash B over here. We have 48 slash A. There's another detachment of 48 slash A over here. Uh, uh, I don't know how you pronounce that. And we do have 48 C over here. So I've sent them to prep for Cebu. That's the only island that we need to take now. That's the last holdout of Americans in, or potentially Filipino resistance in the Philippines itself. Everything else has been dealt with. So once we deal with that, I would like to have that division either head to Burma or head into Pacific. 
but it really does depend on like what we consider to be like what what is the real danger to us we have a division over here we've got 21st there yeah so there's 21st division out here as well as a, a some naval guard units and other forces that were in the area so it's just regiment sets it's just free regiments in that area it would be nice to have additional regiments around here too oh marcus isn't too far away from building up to level four forts as well now the more forts we can actually get at marcus island the better uh that is going to make it a little bit harder well a, a tougher nut to crack there essentially there's not a huge amount of av but if we can make it a tough nut then that's quite nice it more or less is our wake out here now i'm gonna take a look at that hey it's k uh five though might have been set to upgrade, uh, upgrade by mistake actually um, what about was that oh Osaka Kyoto I've not seen it there. Interesting. Okay. I'm actually not familiar with the um, five variant. Yeah, don't get me wrong, it's um it's a definite upgrade to the H4 K4. The speed is is pretty useful there. But again, it's that horrific service rate and that really prohibits it. So G3 is there. Yeah. This does give me a lot more confidence so that we do have the Misawa uh, KUK over here too. They're almost fully built up now. These guys and their range is just superb. I mean, they have uh, one hex more than the normal hexes K4. Uh, but yeah, the fact that they can do that on a uh, service rate in two is really nice. They're just a lot easier to keep up with. They're also less expensive to produce, I would say, because we have two less engines that we need in there. Which is very handy, yep. Yeah. Too. And they're obviously faster too, which makes a big difference. So just all round good. All round good. Yeah, it's getting that now. We'll go ahead and we'll check on our R and D then. Yeah, so they'll advance next turn then. Feels like it's taken a long time, but it's getting there now. Just looks, uh, well, we had quite a gap in turns. Ah, it looks like we got this one up to 30. That's good then, so that's a, uh, another percentage each turn now. That's good. These aren't too far off now. So, yeah, we'll have the D, uh, D4Y1 uh, in the near future. I don't know. We might be able to advance that a month, perhaps. Probably get a month advancement there. Depends, really. Which is okay. Dojo needs to hurry his ass up. This one's only two off there. Uh, this has been delayed. Could have really... Would have appreciated having the Tojo actually uh, being brought forward a little bit more. It would have been useful at least. Yeah, the Kiei 3. So looking at two eights over there. I think we have slow advancement here. But again, this is all good. Once I get up to 30, then yeah. <laughs> In, oh gosh, when's that going to happen? Maybe 2024 we'll see that up to 30. That'd be interesting. Assuming that we've uh, not won or lost by now. Hmm. Oh, I want to go ahead and check out the vehicle pool. Yeah, 
Yeah, so the vehicle pool there obviously having some points to drain from it. We do have the upgrades for actual tanks, but I suppose that is uh, expected really. We did expect um, to have vehicles coming out of the pool around about this time. But uh, at 160, it's actually over what we initially wanted it to be. So we do have a, a little bit of a, um, extra. That should be relatively okay. It'll cost us doing this with the, uh, well, when we do attack Chongqing with the actual armor, it'll cost us, but I think it'd be worthwhile if we can obviously take supply down and ideally a fortification level. That would be really quite good. I mean, Chongqing, I'm going to hope that it's still level six. I've got to hope. But no real clue. Yeah, it still has those units out there. Hmm. Uh, we do have the two naval guard units now, finally on their way down here. I may have one of them break off, so we can actually have uh, garrison sorted out over here. I could even potentially take both of them down here to the Philippines, because I do need to actually get the garrison sorted down here in the Philippines. Uh, we don't. We have a kind of weird situation with the garrisons out here. I do need to spread them out a bit. Then we have that uh, fully occupied in garrisons, which is useful there. Over there, a ball. Still working on that airfield. It's expensive, but I think it's worthwhile. We do have a good deal of fuel there. Sorry, uh, supply fuel. However, not so much. Uh, we do have our shipment on the way. Ah, that's the big one. That's the 182k one. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, 182,000 there. We do have a sub nearby, so it might uh, go through Manus and further to the south there. They're set to reaction one, so I'd like to try and avoid that. Uh, that should be Ocean Shallow here as well, so we could go from two Ocean Shallow and down that way would be quite handy. I may go ahead and send that DD group out there. I do have these ships over here that I would like to get moved out elsewhere in the near future. We'll have a number of them actually head back with the convoy. At least then they'll have heavy ASW patrols around them. And that should help protect them quite significantly. Yeah, can these AOs move back as well to take on additional fuel be handy. Uh, so we only have a couple of torpedo boats left. Gosh, I wish we had more torpedo boats. They're uh, actually more valuable than you would think, so we don't have all that many of them. Which is to my regret. Okay. Yeah, so I-29 is able to roll on out of here. That's good. She's fueled and good to go. She has her aircraft. So I'm quite happy about that. I-7, uh, 22 and 20 can take some time. This one being a B... Uh, J. Yeah, C-1. So we've got two C-1s over here then. That's very good news. So I think I'm going to have them uh, worked on in the yard, perhaps. Should be able to then ferry forward another two midget submarines, which is quite handy, in fact. Uh, they're great. Once we actually get them in a position where we do have fuel, like we need to have some fuel to maintain them. But they're actually pretty handy. I mean, how how much they're really going to do um, in an actual situation is unknown. But it's it's one of those, really. Uh, we have a, a number of submarines, but we don't have like an infinite amount of them. So if we're now to create these guys or just supply, it's costly, and they don't get all that much in the way of shots. But if they land a hit, then that's a big hit. It's like, they're effectively living minds, is how we view them. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they're not doing fairly well. Just waiting for the pieces to fall into place there. So yeah, I'll see you, uh, what we're doing about the fuel. I think that fuel was actually... Mm, I think we had that uh, retirement allowed by mistake there. Obviously did want to have that fuel out there. Though... I was wondering there had they potentially refueled them, but I'm not too sure. We do have a, um, a large number of mine layers that have arrived over here in recent days as well. Uh, these guys, I do believe, well, they don't have mines. Do any of these have mines? Uh, I thought some of them would have mines, but they don't have mines. There are others that do have mines, though. And that probably the two that just come in there. That's okay. Right, so, and then even. 4.3 there. We're doing well enough over here on the airfield. 
It may be worthwhile just to concentrate and fortify it now. Or maybe even build up a port there, perhaps. A uh, port would be quite handy. But I guess we'll have to see what we can get away with, really. Let's see. Um, it's a very interesting scenario that we have here. I'm not seeing all that much, though, which is a bit of a problem. I mean, we really do need G3Ms down here. G3M freeze. The issue is when there's cap, it does make it expensive. But there's not all that much I can do about that. Hmm. But now we'll go ahead and call it there. Uh, so thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you had a superb time. I know it's not perhaps the most interesting thing, but that does mean that we should be able to get through this turn ideally much faster. Ideally, we have a quicker turnaround. So, until next time, uh, thank you for watching. See you in the future. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't. If you would like to support the channel, a small payment, one pound, would be really much appreciated. Or becoming a patron. That, or a patron. That'd be really good. Until next time, thank you and goodbye. Take care. Stay sexy.